MPLMY Season 13. It's KGE up against Todok. KGE on blue side, Todok on red. That was hot, by the way. Looking at the opening. Yeah, that was a very, very, very sick overlay. Very clean. But uh, I like how this chip is just invading rather early as well. I was very surprised that Toda is not defending this, but because of this play coming from Weir, it is going to kind of slow down the rotations overall. You can see none of the Toda members here, especially the mid lane Roman, is just ignoring him generally. But Momo, bottom lane, taking a little bit too much damage against Move here. Not a great sign, but Weir now going to be a little bit of an awkward situation. He's taking a little bit too much damage. Does have the passive to kind of regenerate later on, but Todak doesn't have the tools to actually commit to this fight. Susujin being called in right now. Looks like they want to go for this, but seems like they will disengage. KGE seems to be winning on all fronts right now. I mean, I would say they have the advantage coming in from draft because their goal laner as well as the XP has the capability of actually owning the lane to make sure that their counterpart aren't able to rotate as fast. So I kind of feel like this is a good sign. And we definitely see the extra damage going on to the chips. Uh, it, it matters because I feel like King Empire, they really want to go for that camp because it does made it so that Gary gets to level 4 a little bit later. But because of the because of the changes in jungle, they have to retreat. It's pretty significant here. I think that at least for the side of KGE, they have multiple at... Wait, hold on, hold on. Engagement in enemy territory. Okay, top side here. Frederick getting me dived on as well. They've called the toys, but Son Momo also very low. Not going to be able to provide a, uh, the backup here as King Empire may be able to collapse on this as well. They've lost the Frederick. Momo is going to be left all alone here. He doesn't have his four, and he's going to fall eventually. First blood in the hands of the chip for King Empire. Nicely done by King Empire. Well, looks like the damage reduction change definitely mattered for Gary there. Yep, I mean, at this point, this is what King Empire has to do because this is what the Boxia wants to do. You want to go crazy early. Oh no, Gary immediately caught up by the chain combo here. Replicia not able to retaliate against this King Empire. Going to be grouping up, trying to invade on the rules of purple buff here. It's past two minutes, so no more reduction for Todak. But who's going to get it as well? And Sutsujin steals it away, so no purple buff for Gary. Lovely work so far by KGE. I'm liking what they're doing. They're stealing away camps, even though the hot fixes have been put into place. Better yet, they're using their side lane pressure as a means to keep Todak on their toes constantly. But for the most part of it, it just boils down to whether or not Victor shows himself on the map. I would say this also shows that Smooth has been using his time very, very well. We've mm -hmm. seen after the Benedict keeps getting banned out, he's been practicing this stuns. But this time, I I've never seen him being this oppressive. I've never seen him dominating the lane this much. And it's against Momo of all people. I mean, they've done it before, right? And I think that's what we need to see from KGE side. We have been seeing that their side laners have been the key for this team to give them that identity, and the other three need to supplement that. But I think for King Empire in a meta like now, with how the draft has been, it's designed around them. Yeah, it is going to be a little bit difficult here. But again, right now, Todak, they are going to be forced to play behind here. I like how they're having roughly said babysit uh, Shizu as a priority defense, but again, Putting in this situation, being reactive here is going to be hurting them here because King Empire is dictating full tempo and going to be uh, setting up smooth to try and gank down towards the bottom lane. But again, it is going to be a slow game for now. I mean, like right now, it is in King Empire's e uh, interest to actually control Shizu because again, the second turtle is going to be a big power spike for Toda. So if they can make sure that that doesn't happen, then King Empire will have a better lead in this game. Okay, Vitor now going to be pulled back here. He's getting zoned out. Finally pops the shortcut to try and keep himself alive. So he is going to be A-OK -okay because of that shortcut. Toda not able to collapse on this. Rafflesia not in position to try and re-engage this. Still has the ult, still has the flicker. But turtle going to be the priority. Vitor going to be waiting up on his health. He gets his passive, so he's going to be regenerated for now. But Toda. Are they going to try and buy time here? What do they do now? I think for KGE Empire, the fact that they lost their shortcut allows Todak to actually take their time with this. They want to get to the later stages of the game. Let's drag this turtle out for as long as possible. Yeah, right now it does look like Todak has priority here and Gary is going on to smooth. Okay, here comes Pops out here. He's going to be dropping the interruption. Yeah, big one, big Minos Rage. Here comes the real woman invasion as well. It is going to hurt them. And Moscow is going to be joining the fight as well. KGE, they were caught off guard. Susujin will fall. Shizo gets the kill. A big catch from Todak on King Empire. Well, for the most part of it, I think we need to take a moment here. Because after seeing KGE do so well, 
at the very least, Tordok, they're playing their comp around the turtle fights exactly how we expected it to. Yeah, like I said, this rap is all about the second turtle. But before that, it looks like they're going for this lane. Looks like they want to get this turn as fast as they can. Well, Zayam Sanfoy going to be the POI right now. They dropped the draw card as well. They're going for a counter play to get one. But Todak will be able to back out for now. It's not exactly the greatest, but still, they get something out of it. I would say that was a massive misplay because the minions aren't positioned well enough for them to actually contest for that uh, for that objective. So I feel like they, they showed their face a little bit too much. They should have, after the victory there, control the lanes again and then think about getting an, an, an objective. I kind of feel like that was premature. Okay, walk me through this, right? Because right now all eyes are on Vitter for this early to mid game eventually with the power of that shortcut. Should he be using it defensively like this? Or are we expecting King Empire to maintain this sort of pacing against Toda? I feel like they have the right idea, which is they're trying to slow down Gary as much as they can mm -hmm. because we have to remember the changes for the Fredrin is that the more levels you have, the, the shorter cooldown that you have on your energy eruption. So if you are able to delay that, then Tora is no longer going to win this neutral objective. So using the shortcut onto the Fredrin is good. However, the timing doesn't seem to be uh, well thought out because it doesn't seem like the rest of the team is ready to collapse onto the Fredrin. So the idea is there, the execution isn't. All right, let me expand on that a little bit more because I feel a lot of it just comes down to like how much time you have walking away from that mid lane. And I think as of right now, Vixana is doing a good job clearing, but not necessarily leaving the lane as quick. Well, bottom lane, middle lane here, Todak finally kind of doing a little bit of check here to try and see if there are any kind of response here. They don't really have an idea where Chips is. Top side as well, Sasa gonna get harassed here a little bit here, but Todak, they're grouping up as five. This is exactly what they need to do to, to, to prevent being picked up apart, but at this point, is it actually worth it here? They're prioritizing the top side, but bottom lane smooth is already shoved up towards the, the tier two already. Honestly, I have no idea whether it's worth it. I'm leading towards okay. not worth it because against strong leaders, Oh no, Weeder gonna be jumping from our back lines as well. Real Blue gonna be zoning them off. Weeder now trying his best stall to play here, but a turtle in the hands of Toda and Gary with a big appraisal's wrath survives it all. King Empire, they have to back out. They will find Momo instead. Trade one for one, but at the same time, Turtle in the hands of Todak. I think. You know what? You know what? I'm doubling down on this. I think KGE have the correct idea, and I think you, both you and me, LaFell, we both agreed on this. We weren't sure about that one because whether or not they were going to take that fight, completely separate story. This should be a nothing sandwich for now, but whoa, wait, 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 oh, okay. hold on. Okay, I, I don't think they can fight this here. Todak will get a free tier one up top. Meanwhile, again, Todak playing this Ube strategy, that which is not hurting them a lot because Smooth is getting free farm all the way in the bottom lane throughout the past two to three minutes right now. I think they're missing out on the main point of the composition, right? It doesn't matter whether they get Turtle or not, they need to get map pressure. So I'm surprised that, like, you know, they had Smooth on the side lane. They also have Vitter right next to him. I, I totally get that, but once you spot out for by the enemy turtle side, you just send Vitter, right? Yeah. That tier two should not be there on the bottom side. No, legit, I, I do agree. I kind of feel like King Empire understanding that Toda, their strength is in the river. Just play for the leans, man. Yo, what? Vitter just died tier two? He's gonna go commit on Momo. Instantly takes him out, pays with his prize, but again, under tier two, Toda is splitting up the fight. They don't really want to commit together here, Gary. Committing onto Dato, they will find one, but it is gonna be a trade with Rafflesia as well. They will lose Gary from Sasa. And just like that, King Empire, they dissect Toda on all fronts here. Zayim left completely alone, not able to join the fight at all. I mean, as we say it. So, about the river there. Right, right. <laughs> no, 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 that guy says, like, your strength is in the lanes, so go to the lanes. The oh. moment they go to the lane, they want big. I swear, I swear. Somebody there, the they're, they're analysts are probably listening on the cast right now. It feels like every single move that we've mentioned Odak or King Empire take it a step further, right? Just leaning into the strengths of their composition. This is what we like to see so far, but we haven't seen the major overlaps between the two, right? How are they gonna struggle and find that position against each other? Because so far, it feels like the Spear of Destruction, whether it hits or whether it doesn't, really depends on its target rather than the position that it gets. Right now, honestly, Shizo is not even a three item power spike. Shizo needs four because three main damage items and one defensive one. Whether it be the Wind of Nature or, or Immortality, kind of doesn't matter at this point. He just needs one extra defensive item, and this game will go over to Toda because King Empire have 3,000 gold lead, but Toda is still able to keep up with the pace because their, their strength is around the Riverside, and King Empire, they made that one good play around the lane. If they keep playing the lanes, Toda won't be able to fight back, 
So uh, King Empire, they need to understand this. As long as we attack the lanes, we have a massive advantage. Yeah, and as of now, the, the Lord getting juggled in between Susujin as well as Gary. They don't can't really decide what they want to do. Reader has been showing himself so many times down bottom, and Toda, they're just not budging away from this Lord fight. Uh, I mean, considering that it's 30k to 26k, King Empire, they have a lot of time to work this if they want to set up for a checkmate angle, right? Yeah. Ideally, they get the they get that Lord, get one inhibitor, create a 10k gold lead, and close this game out against Tordak. That's the most ideal, but we've seen teams actually fumble the ball because of these Lord dances taking way too long. Well, speaking of Lord Dance here, Peter going to be uh, taking the short route from the top side. He's looking for a flank here. Zaim Senpoi seems to be showing himself a little bit here. Here comes the conceal play. He wants to go for Zaim Senpoi. He's thinking about it. Four men together, all grouped up. Not worth challenging the Minotaur, but if they get the first jump on Replacia, that's a completely different story here. Lord in the hands of King Empire, and Todak says, you know what, not worth it. You know, that was actually pretty good coming in from King Empire. The fact that they were able to sneak it under Todak's noses, that was impressive, especially if are using the uh, Conceal just to zone them away. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not going to engage, but you don't know that. I like that. I like the posturing from King Empire, right? Because they know they can get a reaction out of Tora. Oh, two men taunt coming in. They don't what? get completely destroyed. Peter going for the flank. He's in a little bit of trouble here, but he's going to be able to get out, fortunately, here with the help of Sutsujin. But Sutsujin has to pay the price. They trade one for two, and Toda is able to defend now. Dedo is so mad. He, oh, thought, yeah. he thought the knockup was enough to cancel it. And Gary's like, nah, nah, this is still going to kill you, brother. Oh, that appraises Raph has has some emotion behind it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that hit so hard. Oh, uh, that's a feels bad moment for King Empire because it, it felt like an endable moment for King Empire, but because of this small misplay, Torok is able to hold on for at least a good amount of 20, uh, two minutes. Kind of made. Kind of made it look like Vexana was in like a secret relationship with Frederick. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Frederick was not happy with how it ended. <laughs> Where were you last night? <laughs> Where were you last night? <laughs> Uh, all right, all right. For the most part, KGE now playing on the opposite side of the map, right? Playing for the long lane. 96 more seconds until we next see the Lord spawn. The checkmate angle, they, they missed it, right? They missed that entire timing unless Torak fumble the ball really, really hard right now. But look at them. They're stuck as five. They're not giving that opportunity. The yeah. craziest stat I saw just now was that Gary is the highest damage dealt. I mean, like, to be fair, it's, it's not, like, way above everyone else. But still, that shows how much the damage the Praises Rap still deals. True damage, man. True yeah, damage. at the I'm same fair. time, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Like, if Gary is being, like, is able to catch, like, two to three members here, you follow in a Minon Rage, King Empire just can't get out. So, like, you can see every single time King Empire takes his fight, they want to take this fight as chaotic and as split as possible, just because of the fact that they don't want to be chain CC'd by all the combos from Todak. I mean, there still needs to be a front-to-back, right? I mean, I don't think that KGE is in a position to actually take these front-to-backs like we usually see. Even if they get the flank, who do they want in the back line, right? Because at the end of the day, Deto still needs somebody in front of him to actually soak up the damage. Here's the thing. This Thomas Pick is genius. And the reason being is that he's one of the heroes that can use a vengeance. Yep. And the vengeance can make Moskov kill himself, man. Like, in the team fight, if Smooth gets on top of Shizu, that's a big win for King Empire. After that, it really doesn't matter. Shizo can't attack. Especially if he has, he, if he has uh, three items, four basic attacks, and he's done. Oh, four basic That's how attacks. strong the vengeance is. Does, does, does Shizo force himself to get a Hasclaw just to counter that? Uh, I doubt I don't it. it I, I don't think it's necessary. The Demon Hunter short Sword should keep you alive. Just don't hit the vengeance. I think it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a waiting game. It, it's a waiting game, right? It's about how can you get these free resources out of your opponent. And considering how King Empire plays, they are not throwing resources without a purpose. Now, Peter, he's got the immortality. He kind of scouts out the rotations coming in here. He's calling in the cavalry, but he doesn't really know where the rest of the team are. Zayim Senpoi going to be running all the way back towards the power lines here. He cannot afford to be caught without the real world duplication here. Khan comes in, trying to check onto a smooth, but smooth. Getting his health dropped pretty low from the glowing one coming in from uh she's from Shizo right now. Eh, sorry, Rafisi. from Rafasia. Uh, Not Rafasia. Wait, wait, Zyme from Senpai. Zyme Senpai. Oh my god, where did he go? <laughs> but uh, they're all starting to another check once again. <laughs> smooth. I mean at this point they're trying to force out smooth from using the uh the vengeance man. Like they understand that's a win con for for King Empire. As long as smooth is a non-factor, 
they could even if they don't take this Lord, they can take the team fight. And they don't have a real means of chunking him out, right? They need Zyme Senpoi to walk into position to get a Void Blast to even get some free damage onto him. You can, you can see Zyme Senpoi is just so afraid. Wherever Reader shows himself, he's hiding on the other corner of the map, the furthest away. But finally, gonna be showing a little bit of aggression here as a Lord. Getting kited a little bit more, King Empire still deciding on how they want to take this point. Conceal play comes in, but no, Rafflesia, he jumped in, instantly got melted here. Momo with the final slash, instantly gets popped off. Sasa in the back lines, fights two, gets the double kill. And Toda, they immediately got shut down. No Lord, no jungler, no anything. That, oh. that was... That was a huge misplay, man. Like. I was surprised by how much damage Rafflesia took mm -hmm. and that forced Shizu and Momo into a very bad position because they're like, we got we got to save this bad situation. I, I feel like they should not have forced that. I oh mean, boy. to be fair, I think they got caught with their pants down. I think that Rafflesia wasn't expecting that much. Well, let's look at the items, right? Let's let's have a good idea of what they built. Oh. Death was actually so strong. No, here's the thing. My Sasa's God. new item. Oh, that's also true. Wow. Sasa's new item. That is a little bit unexpected He's here. 2,300 gold ahead of Shizo. Ha Dude, no wonder, no wonder Refnesia was chunked that low. It's and a full item Roger. And he's using the Trinity build, so he has consistent damage rather than that like big burst that we're used to. Yeah, in the human form, yeah. I, I was expecting the burst potential coming from Sasa, but considering how tanky Todak is, it makes sense why he went for the Trinity build. But at the same time, I did not expect him to just dive the back lines and fine too. But for now, Tier 3 will fall. Todak has no choice but to full defense this. Can they get the full Wombo combo? She's trying his best going for the fight here, but 3 oh. man knockout from Dato oh. will stop the combo. Minon's Rage comes in. Susujin holding for his dear life, but Dato will finally train him off. Crystal being focused down. Todak will lose everything for absolutely no chance at all. What a start for King Empire. Clean start, strong momentum still playing to their strengths. Cool, calm, and collected.